The following stories are from members of Hanmam Church in South Korea. They aired on a Korean Christian TV network called C-Channel and were dubbed in English. Hello, I'm Ryongi Kim from Hanmam Church in Chuncheon. My life used to be all about trying not to feel alone. I clung to anything and everything that helped me forget my loneliness. But no matter what I did, I couldn't fill the void. Instead, it just grew bigger. Then, I believed in the risen Jesus, and He not only filled my pit of loneliness, but everything else too. I'd like to share with you my testimony about how I came to walk with Jesus. My family had been rich ever since I was young. Whatever I wanted, I got it plentifully and I took that kind of life for granted. It was to the extent where, when I was entering university and I had to live away from home, my father didn't hesitate to buy me an apartment and a car. I was a model student all throughout primary and secondary schools. It's an embarrassing thing to say about myself, but being intelligent, looking young for my age, and having a rich father were assets that helped me live the life I wanted. Ultimately, I was living however I wanted within society's boundaries. A plentiful life was a very easy one. I did everything I wanted. If I needed a break, I could take it. I didn't have to do much thinking or fretting. If someone said something judgmental or bothersome, I'd say sorry, then forgot all about it. So, until my mid-twenties, I lived a confident and joyful life. I have an older sister and she'd always ask me, why are you so happy every day? She thought life was meaningless and bitter. I couldn't relate to her at all. We had grown up in the same environment, yet she was metaphysical and always deep in serious thought. We were completely different, but I liked following my sister around, and we did a lot of things together. I've been a Christian ever since I was born, Up until middle school, I could miss school, but I couldn't miss church. My parents were diligent Christians who had big responsibilities at church. When I entered middle school, however, they told me that studying came first and didn't say anything even if I missed church. I thought that was a little odd, but I was fine with it. My Sunday school friends had begun to stop attending too, and worship services were boring anyway. This led me to being a Sunday Christian until my university years, and I lived a confident life however I wanted, apart from Jesus. Strangely, the fear of hell still lingered at the corner of my heart, and because I really didn't want to go to hell, I couldn't stop going to church. All the while, I was always confident and happy. In this way, everything was easy for me. Dating and marriage were no exceptions. During college, a boy had told me that he had feelings for me. I couldn't forget him, so we dated for a long time before we eventually got married. I was used to boldly living my life my way, and I thought my life after marriage would be the same. But marriage became a huge mountain standing in my way, and I couldn't climb over it. Because I had always done things my way, I had conflicts with my in-laws about every little thing, and my husband always had to put out the fire. I was repetitively fighting and making amends with my husband as well. All of us, my husband, my in-laws, and me, were resentful about not getting our own ways, and we just kept hurting each other. Then one holiday, I found myself thinking, not a single thing goes my way here. My pent-up resentment exploded, and we had a huge fight. Then, I walked out of our home without a second thought. I was confident that my husband would come and get me, but he didn't. After that, we separated. Then, we got divorced. In this way, I had experienced the first failure of my life, and it was very hard to bear. I felt like my husband had betrayed me after I trusted him. The pain, the conflict I felt inside, 
The endless worries and the unquenchable loneliness within the depths of my heart gave me such a hard time. I was having such a hard time with my emotional wounds that I came back to my mother's and kept myself busy with travel, rest, and studying, hoping that I'd recover. I tried dating, too, but a loneliness and sadness that didn't used to be there would periodically torment me. I did whatever that helped me forget this unsatisfiable loneliness even for just a moment. I was shopping, traveling, going to the movies, dating, doing sports, getting massages, but it was all just temporary relief. The loneliness that had settled deep within gave my mind and body a hard time. Then my sister took me to the church she was attending, which was Hanmaum Church. From the very first worship service, I listened to the message very well, and amazingly, I felt like I was healing. Every day, the resurrection of Jesus was overwhelming the church. Then one day, my eyes were also open to the fact that Jesus was a real historical figure and that his resurrection was a historical truth. I could believe in his resurrection. I was amazed to see that the disciples had run away cowering when Jesus had died, but after they had met the risen Jesus, they had become martyrs. The confession of Jesus' brother James was amazing too. From that day on, I ran over to church whenever I could. I didn't miss Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday worship services. I wrote testimonies and went to early morning prayer. I found myself with peace in my heart, and it was so wonderful. Then my father co-signed a loan that went badly, and our family went broke overnight. At the time, I had been accepted into residency at a university hospital, but because of our financial circumstances, I had to give it up and become a doctor with a salary instead. I moved to a city called Chechen, and I tried hard to hold on to the risen Jesus while living there. However, my faith had no power. The word grew further away from me every day, and I was skipping church a lot. The loneliness planted deep inside my heart reared its head again, and again I began to focus on the things that would help me forget it. I knew that these things were only temporary relief, but I was still relying on them to help me forget this loneliness. During this time, I opened my own clinic in Chechen. My sister came to help, and we worked very hard for our family and its dire financial circumstances. I had many methods to help myself forget my loneliness, and since I had my own clinic now, I thought I would be too busy to be lonely. But the loneliness was still there, refusing to leave. My body was tired, my heart was lonely, and I was still living however I wanted. But I had lost my confidence, joy, and easy life. To make things worse, I had to close down my clinic when circumstances forced me to. I was exhausted, both in mind and body. I had hit rock bottom, and it became impossible for me to live without seeking God. When I came back to church, it was still proclaiming Jesus' resurrection. But on that day, the pastor said that if the risen Jesus had nothing to do with me, I didn't have Jesus in my heart. He said that if I didn't repent the sin of not believing in Jesus and didn't believe in him as Lord, I would go to hell. I thought, but I already believe in the risen Jesus. Do I have to repent again? I also couldn't figure out why it was such a big sin that I had lived as my own Lord. I still kept going to church, and my loneliness would be forgotten for moments at a time without a permanent cure. Though I was going to church, loneliness kept following me around, which was different from before. I tried to find a solution at church instead of relying on worldly ways, but the never-ending loneliness drove me crazy. I felt like I was someone left behind after a big party, or left backstage by myself after a play. I felt like I had a hole in my heart due to this loneliness. 
Besides, I had been told that I'd go to hell unless I repented the sin of being my own Lord and not believing in Jesus as the Lord of my heart. I really didn't want to go to hell, so I wanted to repent. However, I couldn't understand why being my own Lord was sin. I was hanging on each day, dealing with the loneliness that was swallowing me up and the fear that I might end up in hell. Then one day, when I was listening to the pastor's message, I realized that I had only believed in the fact that Jesus' resurrection was part of history. I had nothing to do with the risen Jesus himself. I didn't doubt that Jesus was God because of the records about Jesus' resurrection being historical fact. But I couldn't believe that Jesus had risen to become my Lord, and I didn't even want to believe it either. I was shocked when I realized this about myself. The pastor said that the reason why the Almighty had come and gone from this earth was to become the Lord of both the dead and the living, and not only to give life, but everything else too. Then he said that God had given up his Son for someone like me, who had thrown him away and become my own Lord, and he had died for my sins and was raised again to give me a proof I can believe. But still not believing in Jesus and rejecting him was the sin that I had to repent, and I had to believe in him as Lord. He said that this was the sin that the Holy Spirit convicts us of. All this time I had lived the way I wanted, so being my own Lord hadn't felt like sin. I had thought that it was fine for me to enjoy my life as long as I didn't hurt other people. But even for the sake of someone so foolish, the Holy Spirit began to carefully touch my heart through the pastor's sermons. I didn't have any idea about how terrible a sin it was to be the Lord of my own heart. Then I came to stand before the word that said that sin had entered the world through Adam and that in this way all people had sinned. At that moment, the Holy Spirit let me realize that I had thrown God away from my heart and lived as my own Lord while being a slave to the devil. I had rejected God and was slaving away under the devil, but God had sent Jesus, His Son, to this earth for me. The Almighty God Himself had come to this world as a human being for the sole purpose of becoming my Lord. But I had still been ignoring and belittling the Almighty God, saying that I couldn't feel anything, so I couldn't accept why it was such a great sin for me to be the Lord of myself. Because of my sin of being the Lord of myself, Jesus had to go through so much humiliation and pain and been even hung on a cross. And he had risen again to let me believe that he was my God and Lord. But my eyes and ears had been covered, and I had not repented and couldn't believe in Jesus. I hadn't even given him a second glance. But because he loved me so much, he had stood outside the door to my heart for decades, not even being able to knock, just standing outside, waiting for me to open it. I grieved. What should I do? What should I do? I had hurt God so much and had looked down on Him, and I had felt nothing as I ignored and rejected Jesus. What should I do about this sin? I repented. I repented. I confessed that I had hurt God and lived however I wanted only for myself because I hadn't believed in the risen Jesus as my Lord and I sought forgiveness. That was when I repented the sin of not having believed in Him and received Him as the Lord of my heart. This Jesus who loved me so much that He came to this world Himself, died for my sins, and rose again. Amen. I'm currently working as a resident at a university hospital. It's a busy life and you practically have to live at the hospital. Attending worship service isn't easy, but I'm still able to come to church with my sister when I can and concentrate on the Word. As I give worship, I listen to the pastor's sermons and the countless testimonies of my church members, 
Through these, it becomes clearer and clearer to me that the reason why the Almighty came and went from this earth was to become the Lord of both the dead and the living, and that He came not to only give life, but to give it to the fullest. The reason for my incessant loneliness was because I'd been my own Lord. Now, everything in my life belongs to the Lord, so it is impossible for me to be lonely when He is right there. When I think about it now, all the problems of the past would have been resolved quickly if I'd shared about them with my church body and we had prayed together, but I'd been unnecessarily dealing with them by myself and having a hard time. God told us that those who have repented before the risen Jesus and believed in Him as the Lord of their hearts have already become kingly priests. He let me realize that the most worthy life in this world is lived by fulfilling your role as a kingly priest. What I have left to do now is waking up early morning together with the church body to become filled with the Holy Spirit and bear my mission at my workplace and my home as I walk with Jesus. Being a doctor was a tool that God had given me to bear my mission. Now, He lets me see the soul before the bodily disease when I'm treating my patients. Also, I used to think that it was impossible for me to establish a small church at my workplace. Because I'd been reacting only to the things I saw, I thought the busy workload, extreme stress, and my position within the hospital would make it difficult. But now, because the hospital is my place of calling, I am praying for a small church to be raised up there and I'm joyfully sharing the gospel with the patients. The person most amazed about my change is my sister. Because I had been so fickle due to my thoughts and feelings, and I did everything my way, my sister had had doubts about how long I'd be able to last. But now she's amazed at the fact that God can truly fix anyone, and we are running for Christ together. I used to be someone who lived however she wanted, thinking that this world was paradise. Then I became oppressed by loneliness and stubbornly clung to things that might fill my needs, living by my own standards. But because of Jesus, who came to this world as the Lord of both the dead and the living, I live with Him whether I'm awake or asleep, and I'm delighting in being someone who receives the greatest love in this world together with my church body. I will bear my mission all the more, together with my church body, always walking with the risen Jesus. Jesus, you gave me an eternal family and a love not found in this world, and you let me hope in heaven by giving me a kingly priesthood. I love you, Jesus. Thank you. If you'd like to see more stories about how the gospel changed lives, visit us at facebook.com slash HMUOnlyJesus or Google us at HMUOnlyJesus.